And just like that, we go from our chunk of cardboard to our actual piece of metal for our suspension mount. Welcome back YouTube. This is Alpine Fabrication. Today we're redesigning some of my rear suspension mounts on my Suzuki Samurai build. We've got to redesign these mounts because I ended up changing my pinion angle. What that means is I turn my entire rear axle pointing up a little bit further, which causes my previous mounts to no longer work. So you can see I've actually already cut these rear mounts off of my truss. I did this in the previous video. This means our goal for today is purely focused on just redesigning these from scratch. So there's typically two methods that I take when designing metal parts from scratch on custom components, and that's gonna include using a CNC plasma table. But if you don't have one of these and you just have basic hand tools, I will be covering the methods for doing that as well. Our first method is going to be using photos. So this is where you're gonna take a top view, a side view, and a front view, ideally. You can probably get away with just one or two, depending how complex this design is. The main goal with this method is that you're gonna import these photos into a 3D design software, such as Fusion 360 or SolidWorks. You're then gonna use these on different planes, which is gonna be your boundaries for your design. I will say that this approach is a little bit more tailored to those who have experience in 3D modeling, as you do have to use a little bit more advanced tooling in the software. But once you have a handle on this, this is really quick and it works really well. I use this method for my front frame stiffeners. I built my rear axle truss with it. I even built some of my link mounts by using this method. Option number two is actually going to be using cardboard. And that's where you're gonna be using CAD to put into CAD. Preferably something cool, this is from Trail Gear. Um, but once you grab your cardboard, it's basically gonna be trial and error and you just sitting down, scissors are gonna be your best friend, a knife is gonna be your best friend, and you're essentially just gonna keep cutting away at the cardboard and test fitting until your design is looking the way that you want it to. everyone this is where we turn this cardboard into an actual chunk of metal that we can put onto this truss and make use of on my suspension we're going to have two separate paths here so i'm pretty thankful that i have a cnc plasma table behind me and i can turn this into an actual cad file which i can then print but if you don't have a cnc plasma table and you're just running with a cutoff wheel you can by all means still do this method essentially you just want to be throwing this down onto the piece of metal you're then gonna trace the outline, and then you can use whatever tool prefer that you prefer, either a cutoff wheel or a porta bandsaw, even a bandsaw, and you can cut that out of your chunk of steel. For me, I'm pretty thankful that I have this CNC plasma table, and this is where my path kind of deviates a bit, where I take a photo of this, and I like to throw a guided ruler or some form of a scale into that photo. I use that photo to then import to my 3D design software. I typically use SolidWorks, Fusion 360 is another option that's pretty popular. And then once you have that photo in your 3D design software, you can scale the picture to be according to that ruler that you put in the photo. And then you can essentially just trace the outline of your cardboard and then turn it into a proper file, smooth out any edges, get your whole dimensions proper, and maybe do some fine adjustments based on any other measurements that you've made. When I work with a CNC, my next step is to then take that 3D design and I turn it into a DXF file. That DXF file is basically just a vector style format that a lot of the CNC programs consume to understand where the path of the tool needs to be running. The funnest part by far is just watching this machine cut out the steel. It just reminds you how much work you're saving by having one of these machines and I'm thankful for it every time. And just like that, we go from our chunk of cardboard to our actual piece of metal for our suspension mount. After using a CNC plasma cutter or plasma cutter for any for that matter, you're gonna have some chunks of slag. And that's what you saw me doing is just chipping off some of the slag off the side of these. You actually saw one of the worst performing parts on my table as well. The reason for that is halfway through the cut, my consumable just blew out through the side. So it actually destroyed my consumable. I had to replace that and I had to run this cut again for a second time. So there's significant slag on this because that first one did not go all the way through. 
Now I do want to point out, if you do not have a CNC plasma cutter, that's entirely fine. I showed you that you can use a cutoff wheel, but remember that you could also reach out to some of your local shops. I know around me there's a lot of water jet cutting services, there's also other CNC plasma cutting services, so feel free just to make this mock-up. You can take this to their shop, I'm sure they can do some of the modeling for you, or you can even send in the DXF file to that shop for them to cut. Throughout the community I've heard other people using a service called Send Cut Send, and I think that could be a really good solution for some people as well. If you don't have a local shop around you, I think they do pretty fast turnaround times and I think the prices are pretty reasonable. Now that we've got this thing cut, it's time to do a test fit and see if this is the actual approach we wanna do and how it compares to our cardboard mock-up. Oh yeah. So it, it looks like this right here has too much slag buildup. This is supposed to be a quarter inch gap that goes on top of my axle truss. And just because I had to do that double cut, because of my consumable, there's some extra slag buildup and that is kind of rounding off the corners. So it doesn't actually fully slide across here. I'll put it on this side so you can see. This method is definitely very powerful with cardboard, but I want to give you just a visual of a little bit more of a complex design. So this is for my pan hard bar. This sits right on my frame mount and I've done this in a previous episode. And this is a, a little bit more of a complex design. As you can see, things do start coming out. We have different planes, different profiles. I have to have a mounting face down here. I need to know exactly where my mounts are for the rod ends. This is an example of when I used a photo on different planes to try to design around other constraints because in this situation, I had a steering box, I had the frame profile, I had the link as well as the jam nuts. There's a lot of constraints into building this and a lot of tolerancing that needs to be considered. So this is a good example of where I wasn't able to make it work with cardboard, but by taking a few photos to set up in my 3D modeling, it came together really quickly. And this was actually my first iteration on this part and it worked out the first time. I think it's really awesome when parts come together like this and you can take your, your design concepts and actually turn them into steel. And that's why I think you should watch this other video where I build my rear axle truss for my Toyota, because that's another great example of where I use pictures and photos to design a truss on a complex part with different contours and different constraints. So be sure to check that one out. Thanks for watching today on Alpine Fabrication, and we'll catch you in the next video.